Hi there, welcome to another Lamina Media Play Guide and Review. In this one we'll be checking out Blade Warrior, developed and published by Mirasoft on the Imageworks label in 1991. Choosing to start a new game, we find ourselves as a Blade Warrior, and in this guide I'll be showing you all of the game. And to begin with, we can fight using a number of fighting moves against some creatures. And you can see as we fight against them, a little amount of blood will come from those creatures. And that shows their energy level. Once four drops appears, then that's them dead. And there is a tower in the background. And by pulling back on the controller, we can leave the tower, return to the game. Or by pushing forward, we can enter that tower. By pulling to the right, we can then enter an antechamber where we can mix some spells. You can see a large number of spells are available, but we've only got two at the moment, a healing spell and a water spell, and for those we'll need a large number of ingredients. You can see the healing spell needs two of those, which happens to be the earth and the water, and the water spell only needs the water ingredients, which we will find by picking items up on this level. So by pressing the M key we can choose to bring up a map and this is where we are at the moment. This is our home base and this is right at the bottom of that map. And you can see all the other areas are wizards that we need to get to who give us special items and the red one in the middle is a special wizard who will help us out. At the beginning we need to familiarise ourselves with the swamp area which is where we are at the moment and this is the first item that we'll need to get to that's a sacred leaf and so by pressing the M key again let's set off in that direction and you can see the skulls there by pressing next to the skulls that will reveal a trap and that will deplete our energy and the energy meter at this point doesn't seem really obvious but we'll be getting to all those meters a little bit later on for now let's try to explore this level and you might notice if we get lost we can always press the m key again and that means that we can find ourselves on that map and the map in this case shows us that we can go north and we can take on a number of bad guys in this high resolution it looks like environment and you can see the silhouettes on offer are really amazing. And you can see cranes and things moving in the background, flies and birds and bees and bulrushes and huge spiders as well. So this landscape is inhabited and with those great sound effects, it really fleshes out that landscape. We can also find scrolls and these scrolls will help us in the game. And by picking this one up, we can find out that the east the Eastern One, the East Mage, must require the Mad One's name. And the Mad One's name is a magical item that we can pick up in this game and we can trade for it. And in that case, that is giving away one of the tricks to complete the entire game. Because without knowing that information, there is no way to complete it. And the puzzles in this game are quite difficult, to say the least. First of our magical items picked up, that's a leaf you can see has appeared and to the left of that leaf you can see us with two blue sparkles on our armour. That means we are very weak at the moment and we don't even have the spells to rejuvenate our energy. So at this point I'm going to avoid contact with half of these beasts but I'm going to pick up some of the critters in the area and hopefully get some spells. You can see a large number of items and a green speck floating around is actually a firefly. That's one of the fire items that we'll need. That's a cobweb and I think that's one of the earth items. There's a rat and I'm not quite sure that might be another earth item. That's an air item. That's a bat. There are a few bats dotted around. You can ignore the beehive and the things in the background. 
usually the sprites in this game are coloured so you can see the grey colours and at this point you can ignore the flying demons and at this point we're just trying to outpace the enemies on this level. That's one of the Mandrake routes, and we'll definitely need to pick up lots of those. In fact, the Mandrake route is one of the most important casual items that we'll find. In the background, we can normally see a moon, and that moon has disappeared. That actually means that we have no energy left. So hurriedly, I'm going back and trying to mix up that healing spell and hopefully we've got the ingredients to do it. To mix spells, all I have to do is to choose the spell and to enter the items that it says it needs. In this case, some earth spells and some water spells. And having done that, you click on the cauldron area and it will mix those together. And then you press the F key as to where you want that to go. Press F1 and that will go into the F1 spot and now if we press F1 we'll leave this area that will hopefully give us some more energy. Watch the moon, I press F1 and that gives us back that energy. So only just in time for our first adventure we managed to get that energy back and I think we've managed to gain another one so I'm holding that back for when this is depleted. And it's a bit tricky to observe the moon every time we want to know how healthy we are, but that saves things clustering up the screen. And the screen in this case is very environmental and it's very atmospheric as well. And you'll find different enemies and different landscapes in every single area of the game. And this gold scroll, well that usually is a grey one, it's just gold because I'm using the 30 at the moment. And that's corrupted the graphics because of the caches. But on a triple O chipset, that's fine. And you may notice we've just picked up a key as well, and that key actually opens this door. So whilst we're here, let's open that door. That reveals the next section of the map, and that's heading towards the West Wizard. But I really don't think that we need to get to the West Wizard at this moment. So this is our second quest. The first quest was for the leaf, and this one is for that key and let's just use another one of our magic spells to give us some energy and let's save at this point now that we've completed that second quest and yes we can save at any point in the game and we have six save slots notice the key is on the bottom and we'll have to get all of the keys in this game Let's return back to our main castle and mix some more spells. our spells it's a long walk to get to our next objective and it's this one here so now that we've picked up a key maybe that key will open one of the doors which we find right next to our home base and the first one is open let's try the third one and yes that now works that means that we have access to another area but we'll have to open the exit door for the game to memorize that at this point it's a great idea just to memorize that game and to give ourselves a bit more energy moving on to the next stage. You may notice I picked up a ring which was hanging down and the items in this game are very difficult to spot and I think this was probably an NTSC compatible game so that meant the graphics played on a PAL machine were rather squashed. You can see that amulet there, we now, we now have that, we have no idea what it is, but we now have it. And we also have the first key, and you may notice the amulet has given us some more protective power. We now have four blue dots on the image.
this area we will find tiny little pixies and by doing a low sweep it is possible to get rid of those and by picking up the potion bottles it is possible to get rid of the flying enemies as well and in this game you're not quite sure whether these doors will open with what kind of a key and we can see an idol god on the floor if we beat up the idol in the eye that will poke its eye out and that will give us I think another water part of the spell and pick up another rat for some earth and a frog for some more water and things like that so you will get used to all the different ingredients that you can pick up along the way in the meantime we've run on another adventure let's pick up that mandrake root before it disappears and let's pile on in to see this wizard and by pulling right in this case it doesn't involve ingredients or spells it means an interview with the wizard and the first question that they will always ask is how's it going man so the first question you should reply with yes you're amazing let's get on with the talking anything else will probably give you less esteem in their eyes so for this one you can go through a number of questions hopefully they may have an artifact a magical power or some help and advice that they can give us and so if i require knowledge i can ask about something and i can also trade an item for that knowledge and at the moment i don't really want to trade an item so by choosing go back to the forest that's basically a cancel so it's been some while a couple of years now since i recorded this footage so let's just see what i do in this particular case i'm actually searching for a tablet and i'm searching for a way to satisfy all of these wizards and the aim of the game is to collect all of the talismans that you need to complete a magical spell to defeat Merc, which is the evil one, who we will find later in this game. And he will follow us around the map. And so, let's just see what we actually do at this moment. Well, nothing. It seems we don't have any of the magical items that we need to trade. And we can even trade ingredients as well. So if we want some knowledge, what we need to do is to stick lots of ingredients into his cauldron. And for that, he will often trade bits of information. In this game, the information is rather thin and you really have to pick up every single one of the scrolls that you find and write down all that information. And I guess there maybe is 30, 40, even 50 scrolls dotted around this landscape see we found another key and there are quite a number of keys to pick up in the game and to unlock everything you'll need to find all of those keys and so there is a quick way back from here I can simply go into the tower and push upwards and that will take me on to a flight mini game but we will see the flight mini game at the end of this review and it's quite difficult and gets well some time to get used to and yes whilst we're passing this idol god let's pick up another eyeball but the drawback of the flight game is you don't get to pick up the spell ingredients and at this point of the game it's essential to pick up as many ingredients as possible later on we'll find ways to skip out the level and skip straight through to our destination and that means that we don't get time to pick up the ingredients and there is only a limited amount that we can pick up i think it's 20 ingredients of each type so let's just find out where we are and we must find some blue glitter no idea what that is but that's used later on in the game as an advantage we'll need to trade that with one of the particular wizards to get part of the talisman and each wizard has a part of the talisman so we'll need to find all of the magical items they need and to do that we can read the scrolls and we can run around that landscape and we need to find the keys as well. Let's read this one. The amulet of the sun is to the east of the moon. So some of these things are cryptic. And in this case it's referring to the amulet of the sun which is in one of the wizards. We can trade for that. And I think he also has the amulet of the moon which another wizard needs for a part of the talisman. So that's what that's basically saying. So let's run all the way back to the start again and we know it's the start because when we enter here we can then mix spells. So in our home base what we've got, we've still got the healing spell, we've got no healing left. So let's throw in a number of ingredients and it's guesswork at this point as to how many we need. And I think we can only have four 
maximum so I think that's overloaded the actual portion bottle and we can only carry four in any given spot so the way around that is to mix four of any given items and just to mix four at a time and you can mix four into the same spot and that green bar at the bottom indicates that we have four of them remaining and if we mix up another four into that exact same spot then that green bar will rise indicating that we've got even more of them but we've just spent all our ingredients the sweat the skull the mandrake in fact the sweat is the eyeball that we managed to get from the god so what if we've got a few lightning bolts left a few fireflies a few bats and a few webs but we definitely need the tears and the frogs and the rats and more eyeballs so let's set off on another mission for this let's see the master let's see the major sage in the middle of the maze and for that we will need to take this path and you may notice a green firefly those items will not hang around if you go back they will disappear so if you miss those then there's no way back and for me I'm collecting the red um, root the mandrake root and for me that's one of the most important items in the game because it's a semi-rare item and the items are common rare and semi-rare and they will give us different amounts of mana or whatever you can call them when you're mixing spells so it's important to get the rarer items you can see Treebeard here and a few rock monsters and that means that we're approaching a different part of this maze This door heralds the spot where we can walk through to the Master Wizard and that should hopefully mean that maybe if we walk in this direction, no I'm wrong, this is the Master Wizard and he has a special thing on the top of his um, column, his home, and that will denote the Master Wizard. So here he is, let's speak to him, let's say hello and he will help us three times and on the third time you better ask him for the complete talisman otherwise he will lock his doors and not help us again so let's see what we can ask the master wizard and he will even give us some spells for free at this point but again we can only ask him twice so he can offer us the earth spell and I'm not quite sure but I think well we have the healing spell and the water spell so that's the earth spell the earth spell is used to kill very hard creatures later on in the game but let's not use up our favor with that guy if we could only enter him three times then that's once used up and so further down this road I think there's another key that we could use and that key will be very helpful later on and it's important not to stop and not to get too delayed by the enemies at this point because they will sap our energy and it's important to leg it and continue on with our mission This is where we are, that's the spot of the third key that I like to go for in my route through this game. It's an open-ended game so I think you can collect the keys and go for these missions in any order. But that key should open all these doors and I think that even leads to another key and maybe even a special item. So this is where we are at the moment, we're deep into enemy territory and we're keeping an eye on Merc as well. You can see skeletons waiting to chop us up just like the Ray Harryhausen films and love it or hate it I really love the animation and I love the detail as well as we go into the graveyard and try to find that special item but we can't get it at the moment until we kill all these skeletons so let's just grab that key and run like heck and keep an eye on our energy so that we can refill that That's yet another key, you can see it's one of the first five and those first five come in handy this early in the game because that means you can open lots of doors and fast forwarding through we're now walking through to one of the northern mages in the game 
and you can see where we are according to that map and now we've opened a few doors we can now get access to most of the areas of the map and this area in particular is important for a number of reasons now we've collected those keys so we can stop off and check out the wizard at this point but i'm probably going to keep on walking because i know down here is another one of the magical items that you will need to complete the game and maybe even a key as well It's important to know where we are and it's important to find this area because this is a key area literally that gives us yet another key and one two three four five six seven it looks like out of the eight and we picked up the amulet as well you can see the red thing and in this particular playthrough of the five different playthroughs I don't seem to have the uh, blue ring that we picked up earlier on and that's very easy to get that's one of the three doors that we saw next to our home base I think that's the third of the three doors you walk through there and you get that but I had to play this game three times sorry five times and record three hours with the footage which I've now condensed to an hour and that's because I ran into various dead ends in the game where you need a certain magical item to unlock a certain magical item usually a part of the talisman and if you've begged borrowed traded and sold that item earlier on then that means you cannot complete the game and I found that out by trial and error and reading all of the scrolls that's why I'm not reading any of the scrolls in this playthrough because I am started the game yet again from scratch and I'm simply marching from location to location trying to complete this in the fastest time possible for the review and that's another key found, that's an important key and we're really getting there now with those keys that's key number one it looks like and key number one will open a special area in the game so it's impossible to collect those magical items to give us protection but also all the keys so that we can open all the doors so let's fast forward through this and maybe we'll visit the wizard you can see banshees you can see werewolves you can see things that turn into bats you can see griffins you can see all kinds of things in the background hell demons and creatures Things you wouldn't believe so it is a packed out area so make haste stranger I am busy I take it as a great honor to be allowed to see you good day life is a series of unexpected and uh, was a fleeting visit so it's a great honor and so I require knowledge I don't require that uh, I require artifacts what have you got well I've got the helmet of hell hell scourge hell scourge but make haste, I'm bored with you already. Right, what have we got to trade? Well, the leaf, in this case, is sufficient, and we can trade the leaf with this guy, but unfortunately, it's one of the items that he accepts, but it's unfortunately one of the items that we needed later on. So this is actually one of the failed attempts I'm showing you in the moment, just to show you that it is possible to trade away the items that you need later on, and that was an essential ingredient to get one of the talisman pieces and not particularly to get that helmet you can see the helmet gives us a whopping great power and you can see that there are now quite a few of those blue dots of power on that image which is our strength meter according to this game so that means we are strong but in order to get that we'll need to trade that for something else and later on we'll be returning to this wizard and you can take it as read that that magical item will now disappear out of my inventory just like that ring the next time we skip on somewhere else but for the moment let's skip on somewhere else anyway this is right at the top of the map and right at the top of the map is another wizard and so let's check this guy out this is another mage and so this looks like the forest wizard because he looks like a tree and so let's check him out and let's see if we can get anything from him and 
I think he actually needs the leaf in this case, being the forest wizard, I'm pretty sure he needs the leaf for the part of the talisman. And, well, I can try and trade some items. In the meantime, my coin is my stash, so what have we got to trade him? Well, you've no idea what he wants. And so let's give him a few water spells, and he says, well, that's not enough. So we can trade again for some more items, and I can trade for the tablet, but again, I've traded the leaf for that tablet, so I can't get it. So what am I choosing to do? It looks like I'm choosing to lay it, and in this case, I'm choosing the long way, hopefully back home, so I can collect a few more items. And so I hope you can see at this stage that this game is more than meets the eye. It's pretty difficult, hence the quite low scores on the Lemon Amiga database. But I quite like these graphics, I quite like the fact that there is no music, except for, I think there is a jingle when Merc, Merc is hanging around, Merc the evil guy that we're supposed to take down. He's a kind of a bull creature, who's kind of um, a Diablo creature. And certain aspects of this game remind me of Diablo, only it's a 2D game rather than a 3D game. You're still killing creatures, picking items up, making spells. So you can see I've managed to get quite a few healing spells now, which I've assigned to the F1 key. And that green bar you can see is filled up, which means that we have maybe, I guess, eight, nine of them in that particular spot. So we haven't got any spit, we haven't got any hearts, we haven't got any tears, we have got the mandrakes, so we'll mix a few earth spells it looks like, and let's assign those to the F2 key, so it looks like according to that bar we have four earth spells from just those ingredients, and it's pretty that we have to guess at the amount of ingredients that we need by playing the game. And we do, so let's mix up some water spells, and it looks like again there's about three or four of those just by using them ingredients, and the frog is rarer than the rat, so we'll get more from the frog, just like we'll get more from the skulls, if we should find them over the sweat and the mandrakes. So it looks like we're now full of healing spells, I think we can collect maybe 12 of them in any given spot, and now that, that spot's full, we simply assign those to another spot, so that no matter which F key we press, we have healing. And we're running out of items, so we're gonna have to go back to them, and luckily can milk items in the game, as we shall find later on. But I'm not sure where the spittle comes from, if in fact I've ever found that in the game. So we have earth and water, we haven't got the travel spell, so maybe it's a good idea to set out on another adventure and get the travel spell, and that will allow us to travel around the game. It's very, very risky to do that early in the game, because you could travel to a locked area, you can see this is a different playthrough and we have to unlock the area to get to the blue ring that we found earlier on. But this is a different playthrough, we have most of the keys now on this particular one, so let's unlock the central middle door. And as I was saying, if you teleport to areas without the keys then you can be locked in. And that's definitely the reason why maybe one or two of these long plays was aborted because I locked myself in, in one of these areas and got stuck and got bored and had to restart again. So the Northern Mage must be given the Pale Sister of the Amulet of the Sun, in other words the Northern Mage must be given the Amulet of the Moon, and he will give us a talisman piece for that. And I hope it's beginning to make sense now, having gone through this, it definitely needs explaining because there is precious little in the manual, precious little play guides online. And I make these play guides for you guys, in case you want to check out this game and take out a lot of the mystery from it. And maybe adding all the mystery around this really takes away from something. You can see something else hanging there, I think, on that um, shrine. And we're actually taking a beating now from these hell demons. So let's use a few spells. That didn't work. And of course, some demons are more susceptible to some spells than others and the spirits are more susceptible to earth spells and the fire demons I think are more susceptible to water spells and things like that. Let's 
check out where we are and it's important to keep checking out where we are on that map and we seem to have a Monty Python gaggle of mummies waiting to grab us this is where we are, this is another key and hopefully this is well the penultimate key that we need to find in the game and that's behind that locked door we needed the previous key to get there and it looks like spells in this case aren't really working against those mummies struck by an enemy you will pause on the screen and will be unable to fight so it's best to range them and throw your sword towards them at a range you can have a high blow low blow medium blow and I'm not sure about I don't think you can jump in this game but you can do everything else including bend down and reach up moment we need to find the final key and I'm going the long way all the way back because we haven't got the travel spell and it means that we can collect these ingredients again and again we can trade those with the wizards so it's important to have them at every given stage and look at that that's the blue ring that we skipped over completely walked past that but that's what we picked up on the alternative playthrough that's why we haven't got the blue ring but that's why we've got that key and we can always go back for that but selecting the final key hopefully we can now continue with our play and this is an aborted play because we'll still have to get rid of that helmet and we'll still have to get that another way but apart from that we'll make our way through there at high speed and i particularly love to see those giant spiders in the swamp and not that they give us anything but they are definitely fun to fight those spiders with a low sweep and they will turn around if you hit them once and I missed that ask twice of the something to get the something I definitely know that there is a mage that you have to ask twice to help you because they'll say no nah, I'm not bothering I don't like you anyway so in this game there's some mages who think you are all right and some mages that think you are an arrogant person and you can't change those people's minds if they think you're an arrogant so-and-so they will continue to think that and really if they got to know this person really got to know this person they would think the opposite this guy is actually a very nice guy and doesn't wish to harm anybody in the slightest and a bit like me so that's one reason why i'm narrating these in a different voice this time and it's still not my authentic voice which is a bit like this but i'm hoping it's going to be a bit friendlier to the people watching these reviews and to be seem less like you've got to play it this way because these games you've got to play it in your own way so what am i doing at the moment i'm mixing some spells thank you for your generous gesture please take whatever so it looks like that we've traded something for maybe an artifact and it is possible to trade everything in your inventory to get artifacts that's what i like to do literally trade every single item inventory oh no look at this all of the weather changes mean that Merc is hanging around here he is that means we died and that means that we'll have to load again from a save point and that means that we'll have to load again back from a save point so this is where we are this is the final key that we'll need this is opened up because of the penultimate one and so you can see that this is all of the keys now completed and that is what i like to call the swamp key it's the final key that we can pick up and it's next to the swamp wizard and you'll have to look in the background to where those towers are because some of them are actually buried behind the landscape and so this is merc again sometimes if you find merc you can defeat him if you get enough blows on target and he will give us for all our time and trouble a skull and that skull is one of the magical items that we need and we can take that back 
So now let's skip on to another playthrough. You may notice that we have the blue ring there, but we've still got the helmet. And I think we can trade the helmet for one of each item of our magical ingredients. And you may notice that we now have one skull from that encounter with Merc. So at this point you can see we've used up a few rejuvenation spells, which is the phallic symbol at number one. And Merc will actually move around our spells in our inventory, so you can see the water spell has moved up to F3. And uh, we have picked up the travel spell, it looks like, because of those ingredients. And the travel spell is now on F5. And so the travel spell that we've traded for those ingredients with, it looks like, a swamp wizard, that means that we can now travel anywhere we like on the map. So all we need to do is press F5 and that brings up the map like usual and now we can click on where to go. So in this case you can set out and choose any mission you like, in this case we're here and that means that we can check out this Northwest Wizard, whatever he might be called, he's in the shape of Pan and so he is a kind of Earth Spirit. So let's swap everything that we've got and let's hope that he accepts something. You can see that our magical items have been swapped around in our inventory again, so that's Merc again. And sometimes it can mean that we are actually pressing the wrong key for the wrong spell. So Merc can do that at any point and mess up our spells at any given point. But we've just traded something at some point for those magical items, so we'll find out. It looks like Merc's moved our rejuvenation spell all the way up to F7. So we'll have to memorize that, but we've got a fire spell now that, in that requires fire ingredients, which in this case is the bolt of lightning or the firefly or the hearts. So let's get some fire spells and let's put those, it looks like, in F3. So we now have a teleport that's moved around to F5. We now have... Um, water spell which is now moved to f10 the rejuvenation spell is now on f7 and of course it's best to move those around to areas that you can know where they are so now let's mix a batch of heal spells back into f1 and we know where they are so we can get out of trouble and i guess i've had so bored things before now because i've been pressing f1 and merc has moved my spell around that means that i can't rejuvenate my energy enough and when Merc appears, you can't rejuvenate your energy, so no matter how much you have, you have to face him with that. So let's see what we're doing at the moment. We're trading all of our items again for something else, and it says, yes, you can have it. So let's see what we've managed to trade with the Pine Wizard. He's called the Pine Wizard. And in this case, mixing up a batch of spells and giving them to different wiz wizards means that we can get different spells in return. So again, let's give him everything just to make sure that we have enough. And he still says it's not enough for that particular item. We cannot trade talisman parts for spell items, but we can trade spell items for knowledge, and we can trade those for other spells. So you can see the teleport spell in this case is now on F4 and F5. We now have F1 and F2 as our rejuvenation spell. Looks like F6 is maybe a fire spell and F9 is water. So it's important to memorize those before Merc throws them all around the map again. And Merc in this case is a bit of a pain and he will wander around the map at random. But the weather will change when he appears and the weather be will become stormy. So... Let's see if we can trade another item for something else. And he says, yep, yeah, very nice. That is actually what I wanted. So let's see what we've got. We now have a flute. And that flute is very amazing because that's another item that we can trade for, trade for a, a, a talisman piece, which is also known as a, a tablet. And you can see that we've picked up the blue ring in this case and the name. That's the name that the scroll was warning us about earlier on we can trade that name with a certain wizard I think it said the East Moss wizard and he will give us a talisman piece just by giving him that name and so we traded that and I'm really going quickly through the footage so I hope you see more than me 
I have an ancient helmet here. You see, this is the helmet that we wanted earlier on. And we can give him the flute. And we traded the items for the flute. And he will take the helmet for that. So that's great. Now that we have the helmet back, we've traded the flute. And all we need to do is return to the northernmost wizard again with a handful of items. And we can get the flute back. So that's how you get the helmet the legitimate way. Hopefully we've still got the leaf, and that means we can take the leaf to the pine wizard and get the part of the talisman. Now we're trading again for it looks like a smoke spell, and the smoke spell is what we have insufficient, he says. For the smoke spell, let's try it, try it again. And we don't have many artifacts that we can trade, but I think this glittery spell isn't really needed by anybody, I'm not quite sure. And the ring, uh, let's trade the blue ring, because the blue ring, I think, will respawn. And if it doesn't, that's not really one of the major items that we need to trade with the wizards. So now we have the smoke spell. And I think one of the animals in this game is particularly vulnerable to that smoke spell. But we'll need that later on for a beehive that we'll need to get a crystal and that crystal we will need to trade with a wizard. So let's pile all the smoke into F10 before Merc messes all that up again, and remember that, and hopefully set off towards the beehive, and for that we'll simply use the travel spell. And using the travel spell, you saw it's on the north area, let's use the smoke against the bees, and now hopefully we can punch the beehive and that will give us a crystal. See, the old shape-shifting werewolves also gave us a heart because this fell into the smoke spell and we have the crystal that we need. That's yet another magical item. There are quite a few magical items that we haven't got at the moment. We've got all the keys, so all you need to do is to check out the map that I'll be giving you right at the end of the review, which details all the keys and all the items and all the magic spells that you need for the wizard if you get stuck. Right now, we are heading towards, well, it looks like Merc's quarters again. Here we are in the graveyard, trying to use Earth spells against Banshees. And it's important to do that because we'll need what they give us and in order to use the spell against a creature it has to be on the screen at all times and that means we'll have to chase that creature around. You can see that Banshee has well given us something purple but that's not sure that that's what we need. We've developed another amulet as well but you can see bang 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 there it is that's a purple thing floating around that's definitely what we need so let's grab that. And that's definitely what we need for one of the wizards, that's the Banshee Scream. Let's check out our items, there it is, the green Banshee Scream. And we can trade that Banshee Scream in for a piece of that tablet. So, let's see where we are now. We've now teleported back home again. And Merc, thankfully, uh, reluctantly, has mixed up all our items again. Unfortunately, there is no way to move those items around. Once they are mixed up, we'll just have to mix some more up in the right order. The smoke spell's still on F10, but now our rejuvenation is on F7. So we'll have to remember that, and we'll set off towards our next objective. And that's this wizard. And obviously, these wizards can be tackled in any order, but now that we have the travel spell, it means that we can get there. And sometimes the travel spell takes us onto an adjacent area, which this is, and that's not the area that we needed, so I wanted to do some walking, and the actual area is hidden at the moment. So that's one shortcoming of this game. Let's trade a fragment, perhaps our first fragment, which appears in that area. Let's trade that for the bee crystal, and this particular wizard 
which is perhaps the central wizard, uh, he will accept the bead crystal for a part of that talisman, or the amulet, or whatever you call it. You can see it's there, it's a piece of block in the corner. So that means that we've now got all the keys, we've got the Banshee Scream, we've got the helmet, the legitimate way, we've still got the leaf, hopefully. And so let's go towards that North Wizard, and maybe he will accept the leaf for a piece of the amulet. And let's see if he accepts anything. Well, it, it accepts the sparkle. And maybe I'm wrong with the leaf, but there, there you go. It accepts the sparkle in this case. That's given us the second piece of the amulet. And that's great, that's no problem. And so flicking on to a different playthrough, we are now playing the game again because of another dead end situation that I found myself in. And teleporting to this area, if you kill all the guards, remember this had a key here earlier on, if you kill all these guards right in this corner, it will drop that magical item from where it is and you can pick it up. And I think that's an eye crystal. So let's zip back home again with that eye crystal or travel to the next wizard and we can actually trade this item with that wizard. So there it is, let's trade that eye crystal that we found and now by trading with that we could hopefully get another piece of that talisman. And before we see that let's move on to another wizard and we're moving through them very quickly now because we've got most of the pieces of that talisman we can go through them one by one and trade those in. Banshee scream given to Pan himself, so being of the underworld, he needs that, and for that we needed the earth spells on the Banshees, which we found in the graveyard area. And there's some more shrieking Banshees, and I think that we can use the smoke spell against them. What I'm actually trying to do is to use the teleport, and I'm having to go through all the spells until I find it. So let's teleport back home and find out the order of my spells before we continue our again. Have you memorized that small detail? It's definitely a quirk of this game. It does have the quirks. And now that we've traded the Banshee Scream, we have yet another part of the talisman. You can see we are very well protected because of our magical items. And if Merc attacks us right now, that's absolutely no problem. Merc will be a green dot that's floating around that map. And, well, actually he's not a green dot, he's, he's a clear area which is floating around the map. And he's not a green dot at all. So if you find a clear area moving towards you, a clear circle, that means it's Merc. So here we are again with the central wizard, we're now going to trade the amulet that we picked up earlier on. He says it's sufficient for a piece of the talisman, so that'll do me. And hopefully we can get through, well we haven't got too many magical items now, we're really getting through them. So let's use the teleport again, we haven't visited hmm, this wizard in a long time. This is the east wizard, who, this is where we've got the banshee scream from. So let's visit him again, let's see what he needs. Let's trade something for an artifact, and that's the helmet that we got the legitimate way by trading the flute for him. And so that's another protective item. Once we've traded all the protective items, then that's great. You can see he also needs the name for whatever reason, perhaps part of the talisman, he needs two items. And so you have to give him the helmet before he'll accept the name. If he's trying to give him the name first, he will refuse to give us a part of that talisman. And that's a bit of a, a bind, but let's press up on the column and let's enter a shortcut game. This will take us all the way back home again via the drag. When 
you reach your destination, then you'll land on the top of the tower, in this case it's our tower, and the backgrounds in those minigames will change depending on where we're coming from and where we're going to, and they're pretty difficult, so if you thought that background was pretty terrible, they do change, and this game is pretty random sometimes, but I don't like to use the dragon shortcut because it's pretty risky, and if you fall off the dragon by getting hurt, then you'll find yourself sometimes lost in the maze so perhaps we're going through and perhaps this is the final part of the talisman ah i have a fragment what will you trade for that well he requires another of the bee crystals we can get any number of bee crystals from the beast so that's two wizards that both required the bee crystals for that particular part of the talisman so let's push up again on the wizard's column and let's use the shortcut again and let's try to get home using this method now that we don't really need the items and the ingredients anymore we have all those spells but we've been kicked out of that bonus and we've now landed in a mysterious area miles from anywhere luckily we can now use the teleport to get to where we're supposed to go in this case we have all of those items so all we need to do now that we have all the pieces of the talisman is to return to the main mage, the big Honshon, the number one guy, and he will transform that into a protective device for us to beat Merc at the end of that game. So let's rush on and give you the scores. The last score came from Lemon Amiga, that was 45%. They said that the controls were terrible, which I don't think that they are really. The anti-aliasing of the graphics could have been used, but they really didn't have anti-aliasing these days and it is style over substance well there is substance in this game so 45 percent from lemon amiga amiga joker gave this 50 percent amiga user international gave it 66 percent zap gave it 72 amiga action gave it 74 amiga power gave it 77 Data or Dato magazine gave it 84 c omega gave it 84 percent and generation 4 magazine awarded this game 85 percent saying it's got great graphics, great atmosphere, great sound effects, great playability and great longevity as well and because I've completed, well I haven't completed, I've tried it five different times I can definitely tell you it's not a pushover it will take more than an hour to play this game but now that we have that talisman all completed I'm using the teleport to get Merc, you can see he's the clear symbol and we're chasing after Merc and he's actually running the wrong way so you can tell because the weather is now cleared up you can see Merc is to the south so we can continue chasing after him and he's now all the way down here but when we click on him he's not there so the last difficult part is to track him down because he doesn't want to get caught and I think he hangs around the graveyard at the very end of the game because he knows that we need the Banshee scream so we'll hang around there protect the Banshees but you can see I'm heading north to try and to get Merc and he's already gone off to somewhere else and he's jumped very much north if we jump in front of him he will then go south and we won't be able to catch up so in this case we'll have to outwit him hopefully by jumping ahead of him and walking backwards unfortunately sometimes you can be walking north when you thought you were walking south and that's another quirk of this game and that's my play guide of Blade Warrior I hope after that that you can at least understand the game and how to play it and maybe even give this a go for yourself so thank you very much, that got 7.5 out of 10. Oh, you see what I mean about the club, you can just whack them out with it. Now where I'm going. Shit. I was following you. I was following you. 